The true self and how do we realize it in our lives? The true self is something that when you go to the scriptures, which of course is the highest source, when you go to the scriptures and you say, okay, I want to learn about the self. What is the self? What we're given actually are a lot of descriptions that kind of go around it. And they're honest about it. They say what we're doing here is going around the truth. And what they give us instead of a the self is blah, 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 blah. Instead of that, what they say is all these words we are speaking will give you an idea. Will give you an aspect. Will give you a, a, a reflection. But in order to really know the self, here's what you have to do. You meditate. And they even give you some different practices. I mean, all meditation, of course, takes us to the self. But they give you certain practices specifically for that. And what we realize is the reason that they give us these practices is that we connect with what the self is through realizing what the self is not. So... If I say to you, what does a naked body look like? Well, you could use words. You could verbally try to describe it to me. And you would talk around what a naked body looks like. You'd talk about some, some tone of flesh. You'd talk about some hair. You'd talk about some openings. But those, that, it's talking around Really what you'd say is, well, take off your clothes and look in a mirror. If you want to know what a naked body looks like, the fastest way to do it, rather than me talking you around it, is to say, here's a mirror. Now take off your clothes, all of them. And you're going to have the answer immediately. So this is what the practice of meditation that they give is for. And... One of the beautiful practices that's given for this is a practice called Niti Niti, which is a practice that begins with the obvious. And it says, well, I'm not this sorry. We all get that. I change my clothes every day. Sometimes even twice in a day. I'm not changing myself with my clothes. And you go layer by layer deeper. I'm not the skin. I'm not the flesh beneath the skin. I'm not the blood that runs through my veins and arteries. I'm not the organs of the body. So we go through the physical being, and then we move into the more subtle aspects. I'm not my thoughts. And the reason that you know you're not your thoughts is you would cease to exist the minute you had a moment of stillness. And if you ceased to exist, there would be no one to think your next thought. So the sheer fact that we have thoughts one after the other means we're not our thoughts. I'm not my emotions because the emotions are chemical and electrical patterns of activity in my brain. Because neurologists can actually stick a metal probe into my brain and make me feel emotions. If you ever want to have a really humbling experience, if you ever feel like you really are your anger, have a, uh, a neurologist, I mean, they obviously don't do it just, just on demand because you've got to remove the skull to do it, but the brain doesn't actually have any pain sensors. So when people, for whatever reason, have had to have pieces of the skull removed, they're actually able to go in while the person is still conscious, awake, and, and probe different areas of the brain. And what we know is you can stick a probe in the brain and make someone angry. 
can stick a probe somewhere else in the brain and make them laugh uncontrollably. Stick a probe somewhere else in the brain and make them sexually aroused. Stick a probe somewhere else and make them cry. So we know it's in the brain. And the other reason we know that is when I do things that alter my brain, nothing to do with spirituality, nothing to do with psychology, I take a pill. I drink alcohol. I smoke something. My emotions change. I haven't meditated. I haven't had therapy. I haven't done yoga. All I've done is had something that changed my brain. And look how my emotions change. So the emotions also, I'm not my emotions. And we go through it piece by piece until you actually get to the point where there's nothing left to say, I'm not this. And that's when you have that experience in the what's left in this moment. If I'm not even my thoughts, if I'm not my emotions, and you're able to keep peeling them back layer by layer by layer, then you're left with just is. And that is is a taste of the self. And this is, this is how we know. And then, of course, we try to hold on to it. So we keep meditating to give us more and more of an experience of sitting in that place, knowing what that experience is. But then we also try to take it into our lives because for most of us, we can't spend 24 hours a day or even just all our waking hours sitting on the floor with our legs crossed and our eyes closed. We've got duties in the world. We have things to fulfill. But how do we hold on to that awareness of the self? And this is, this is one of the greatest challenges, goals, because ultimately that's what we're put on earth for. Whatever scripture you read, none of them says you are here to become a CEO. You are here to become a president. You are here to become Miss Universe. You are here to become a billionaire. You are here to be so-and-so's wife or husband. What they all tell us, you are here to recognize the self. but not just for a moment. You're here to recognize that in a way that it's an experience that's so true you hold on to it. And we start to move through the world. And of course, moving through the world becomes very much like our meditation, meaning I have it, I'm interacting with you as self to self, as spirit to spirit. And then I lose it. Somebody cuts me off in traffic or something happened, whatever it is. Something little, something big. I lose it. I'm back with me as separate from you. I'm angry. I'm jealous. I'm frustrated. I feel greedy. I feel lustful. Whatever it is, I've just turned you again into an object in front of my eyes. And just like in meditation, when we lose it, what do we do? We just bring it back. We don't berate ourselves. We don't overanalyze ourselves. Sure, if you find that you keep losing it in the same situation, you analyze it. But otherwise, you just keep bringing it back. Otherwise, what ends up happening is... Everything in life becomes about 
these different people or these different situations that steal my peace. I'm living in an experience of the self if you could just stop annoying me. Like if you could just stop doing that, I am so meditative. And today it's you in this situation. Tomorrow it's you in a different situation. The day after it's him in a third situation. And that's how most of us live. Well, I was in peace or I would be in peace. I would be able to live this except my mother-in-law. My employer, my employee, my next door neighbor, my colleague, my gas station attendant. He's so slow. I'm always late for work. I was so peaceful when I left the house. Then this guy made me late. You see how quickly we lose it. And so the key is really just like we do in meditation a thought comes, we just Bring the mind back, whether it's back to the breath, back to a mantra, back to whatever we're meditating on. Back to the nethi nethi, back to who am I. It's another good meditation, just who am I? Who am I? Who am I? 